when we think about a just transition, it's really about how do you prepare people for the work that's available in the future, recognizing that the skill set I have today might not be the skill set that's needed tomorrow, or what I love about my job today might not exist in the same form tomorrow. So how do I start to imagine what that new job could look like and what that new opportunity could look like? And when we think about the move to a greener economy, how do we do it in an equitable way? It's really about thinking, how do we not let this just happen, but be very intentional of how everyone participates in the transition in a way that can be beneficial for them. A practical example in the world we live in is the introduction of autonomous haulage systems. So today someone drives the haul truck and tomorrow it might be run remotely from a command center. Certainly one of people's biggest concerns is that you remove jobs, replace them with technology, robots, whatever it might be, and that's all there is. But there's actually a number of different complexities to it. You will have situations where work goes away. You will have many more situations where that work gets replaced with different types of work. So we certainly talk a lot and have programs focused on reskilling and giving people the opportunity to develop the skills that will be needed in the future. And sometimes that's in the form of apprenticeships, on the job training, it could be taking advantage of our educational policies. Things like our relationship with Caterpillar and our Vision Zero program give us an opportunity to envision what's ahead. And when I think about that, I see an opportunity for our employees to explore skill sets that they don't have and they wish to acquire. I see them doing jobs that look very different from today, but are exciting and engaging to them. I see people being part of influencing the path we take going forward and letting us know what's important to them as their work evolves. I think another good example of how we're transitioning is how we think about where the work needs to be done. And certainly the pandemic has forced that issue or that topic to the forefront. Not everything has to happen every day on the mine site. It could be done remotely from another location. And so part of that transition is also thinking about where you locate work, which opens up access to different talent pools. It you know allows you to attract people based on a different value proposition and give them a different employee experience. Related to that is not just about moving work off of site, but just thinking about the entire globe as an opportunity for where you place work. So I might do people analytics in Denver today, but tomorrow my team might actually be in Ghana and Denver. And leveraging that diversity of location allows me to tap into talent and provide opportunities for people that maybe previously we felt weren't there because everyone had to be co-located. It's everyone who makes Newmont successful. So it, it's really evolving how we integrate all of the people who are part of the experience at Newmont in delivering results. We are more successful when the entire community is successful and we have the people and the skills and the opportunity to make a tremendous impact. I believe wholeheartedly that the individuals in our organization are capable of not just transforming, but showing others how to do it. And that we can be a leader in these innovative practices. We can be a leader in how you engage employees and communities in the transition, and that we can share our learnings with others so that we can all make this journey successfully. And I'm confident to say that you know, we will focus on employees and communities and really recognize the whole system. And that's what success will look like for us.